Hello dear viewers, this time it's about the composition of brass and its iodometric determination. Stay tuned and have fun watching. Brass is a useful material, for example for plumbing, coin plating, art and decorative objects, and of course, musical instruments. We got some brass craft wire for a closer look. Brass is a gold colored alloy of two main metals, copper and zinc. In the following we will determine the copper content. Anyone who knows this channel already knows this warning. If you are here for the first time, please skip back and read carefully. At the beginning, a short piece of brass wire is cut off and weighed. Here it is exactly 0.16 grams. 4 grams of analytical grade sodium hydrogen sulfate monohydrate is weighed out, placed in a test tube and the piece of wire is added. The test tube is clamped in an angle in a stand clamp and heated outside with a gas burner. Crystal water initially escapes and a clear colorless melt is formed. After a wire this turns greenish, forms and develops a lot of pungent smelling gas. The sulfates of copper, zinc and sodium are formed, as well as water and sulfur dioxide. Only when the wire is completely dissolved can the heating be stopped. After the melt has cooled down, which as so often caused a crack in the glass, we get a turquoise blue mass, which we dissolve with a little water and then transfer to a beaker together with the solution and the water from rinsing twice. Anything not yet dissolved is now dissolved by stirring and heating. The slightly cooled solution and the water from the double rinsing are now transferred to a white necked Erlmeyer flask. Prepare and titrate further with magnetic stirring. First 20 ml of 15% sulfuric acid are added. Then two spatulas full of potassium iodide. The iodide ions are oxidized to brown elemental iodine and in turn divalent copper is reduced to monovalent copper, which together with the excess iodide forms a precipitate of white insoluble copper 1 iodide. The thiosulfate standard solution reduces the iodine back to the colorless iodide, while the thiosulfate is oxidized to the tetrathionate. The mixture slowly decolorizes from coffee brown to milky white. The amount of copper present can be indirectly deduced from the consumption of thiosulfate solution via the released iodine. After clearly recognizable brightening, the dropping speed is then first reduced. Before complete decoloration occurs, 2 ml of a starch solution are added, which makes the equivalence point more recognizable through the formation of the iodine starch complex. Fifteen point eight milliliters of a zero point one N sodium thiosulfate solution was consumed. Since each milliliter of standard solution corresponds to a ten thousandth mole and thus six point three five milligrams of copper, our sample solution contains one hundred point three three milligrams of copper. With a weight of one hundred sixty milligrams brass, this corresponds to a copper content of sixty two point seven percent. This is very close to the manufacturer's specification of 63% and, given the relative inaccuracy of our scales and astonishingly accurate result that can still come about when smaller opposing measurements errors cancel each other out. What is unmistakable, however, is that this is obviously the most common alloy mixture for brass with 63% copper and 37% zinc. Incidentally, the zinc has no disruptive influence on the analysis. Since it is not involved in the redox reaction and does not form any polysoluble compounds with the reactants. Interested in further analysis? Then take a look at the playlist on the top left. Prefer something else? You can find our highlights in the playlist on the top right. Never miss a new video again? Then subscribe to our channel and activate the bell. 
Thanks for watching.